Hello class, this is a video recording of chapter 8 from the personal finance text entitled Consumer Strategies. Consumer Strategies, while there are many aspects of, of your humanity that define you, the things that you choose to surround yourself with or not may define your ultimate happiness, your need strategies. So there's a couple learning objectives of this chapter. Trace the pre-purchase, purchase, and post-purchase steps in consumer pur purchases. Demonstrate the use of product attribute scoring in identifying product. Compare and contrast features of different consumer markets. Analyze financing choices and discuss their impact on purchasing decisions. Discuss the advantages of consumer strategies using branding, timing, and transaction costs. And identifying common consumer scams, strategies, and remedies. <clears throat> so there seems to be a bit of a process. It's not just you run and you grab and you buy. Um, the book identifies three steps of consumer purchases here. Before you buy, you identify the product, identify the market and the financing, if applicable. As you're buying, you're negotiating attributes, negotiating price, and negotiating the payment. Um, mostly with yourself if it's in the retail setting you can very rarely go in and, and try to negotiate your way down at the dollar store or at a store that already has their price set uh, and then after you buy you do maintenance and then you address any dissatisfaction with the product you purchased what do you want what do you want it to do for you and this is all part of identifying the product what do you want to gain by having it or using it, wearing it, eating it, or playing with it? You buy things hoping to solve a need in your life, but uh, I disagree a little bit because you might just purchase out of impulse, and that happens too. might not be to resolve a need unless it's the need to buy. Um, that That's the need you're satisfying. The more specifically you can define the need, the more accurately you can identify something to fill it. And because your budget is limited, you want to minimize your opportunity cost and buyer's remorse or regret at not making a better purchase in order to use your limited income most effectively. And buyer's remorse is what happens to us after we throw away that $4 cup of Starbucks and we walk away and we say to ourselves, man, we shouldn't have bought that. So in the process of identifying the product, we uh, weigh it, how, how important is it, the percentage of the total product value, and uh, attributed to this attribute, we have a scale. Um, in, in our minds, we have the, the weighted score, weight times the score. The sum of the weighted scores is the overall product score. The sum of the weighted scores, the overall product score, um, leads to you comparing products, comparing total scores for each. So it's kind of like in all this, we're basically saying that we rank the, the scores and we rank the products um, by efficiency and, and by price and by opportunity cost as well. Uh, so then all of these are hypothetical. Um, so we have... Uh, the attribute here if we're comparing if we're comparing three different models of a product we have um, we have attribute backlit wireless uh, programmable keys game panel touch media controls design warranty um, and then the weight which is basic essentially like what's most important to us in, in the product we're evaluating. And then you have the score. And then basically the weighted score is just um, the, the weight value of the score that is given. So then at the end when you have, when you compare the three products you can see that the TKG model is the one that's most, um, that most suits your needs. Consumer purchases, identify the product. So here we have uh, more, fewer attributes, more, fewer or products, and then you have more or less satisfaction. So products, attributes, um, up, or and then you have uh, satisfaction increasing and decreasing. 
there are certain things that go in information that, that's c considered information retailers manufacturers consumers and press Uh, another step is identifying the market. You have primary or secondary, uh, actual, virtual, or buyer market. Primary or secondary, you have new and used. Uh, actual, virtual, you have local versus remote. So that's your eBay versus your JC Pennies. And then um, as the, the buyer, you have a broker or a middleman, which could be, um, you know, somebody uh, brokering a, a deal like, you know, like a house maybe a car, a car salesman, somebody who acts as an intermediary to give you the product that, you're, that you need, or you can do it yourself. Primary or secondary, new and used, uh, you can elaborate a little more on that. You have consumable services and durable goods, and then you also, on the use side, you have durable goods. You don't consume used consumables. We don't resell food that's already been eaten. Actual or virtual, uh, again, splits into local and remote. You have here on the local side, retail and wholesale. Retail gives you con convenience, discount, boutique, and cooperative. And then um, wholesale just ends there. This is where you, where you can go into a, um, BJ's and, and buy in bulk. That's a wholesaler. Uh, on the remote side, you can mail order or catalog and do some web shopping. For middlemen, before you buy, you have to identify the product, identify the marketing, identify the financing. As you buy, you can negotiate. This is that you're, you know, you're buying a house, you're buying a car. You negotiate the price, negotiate payment. And then after you buy, you have maintenance to do and then you can address the satisfaction. So. It does sound pretty comparable to buying a car or buying a house. Identify the financing. So you have cash, savings, credit, and debit. Cash you use for consumer goods and durable goods. Assets, not really. You don't really walk walk into the, the BMW store and just drop cash for a car. Or, you know, go to Lennar Homes and drop, 250k for a house in cash. It doesn't happen like that quite like that um, Savings is um, mostly for durable goods and assets Credit f you can use for uh, consumer goods and durable goods and Debt is for assets. So I know that typically one would think you know you use a line of credit or a mortgage as you know a, a big line of credit to, to purchase an asset such as a car or a house, but it's it's more it's more than just a um, a year's worth of debt. So we we call that on its own category of debt. The purchase features delivery options, installation options, warranty, and financing arrangements. Sometimes. Uh, consumer strategies: you have purchase features, seasonality, volume discounts, and price discrimination. And then you must also be very careful about scams. The details of the scam varies, but the pattern is much the same. The fraud sets up a scenario that requires the victim to send money or to divulge financial and personal information, such as bank account or social security, or credit card numbers, which can then be used to access accounts. Never give anyone personal and or financial information when solicited by telephone or internet. Get a second opinion, especially when advised to do so to do costly repairs. And one thing that I try to do is whenever I get one of those scammy looking emails, I copy and paste part of the of the sentence on Google and you'll normally see other people complaining about it as well. Or you can do that also when someone calls you and you don't know and you missed it's one of those things where you miss the call, they don't leave a voicemail. You know that it's a scam, you type in the phone number and um, on Google and then you'll see the complaints about it. <clears throat> Check the credentials of prospective workers or service providers. Get a written estimate specifying the work to be done, the materials to be used, the estimated labor cost, the estimated completion date, and the estimated total price. Um, and one example that I can think of right now uh, when it comes to this is like uh, contractors. If you have to have work done on your house, this is a good thing to do. Or when you are um, 
taking your car to the uh, to the mechanic and you also want an estimate of of um of what needs to be done and the mechanic typically should allow you the opportunity to either do the work there to take the invoice and get it taken care of yourself or take it to another repair shop so normally if you if you would go to a car repair shop and they would charge you sixty dollars to run a diagnostic if you go someplace where they do it for free you can get that diagnostic get um, a, a written estimate of what is needed what your car needs and how much it's going to cost and then take it to another mechanic that would typically charge for a um, a diagnostic but you know that they're a better mechanic so that's kind of like something you can also do to save a little bit on cost and another thing that I've noticed also with my car is um, if you pay in cash a lot of times the mechanics will give you a significant discount not just a percent here or there but like a, a bigger discount somewhere along the lines of 15 to 20 percent and that's something that's a practice that I've been doing for a, a pretty long time um, when it comes to work that needs to get done like housework or car work and it's been pretty successful in saving me some money and I also ask the vendor to provide proof of insurance just in case they mess up they can have some sort of um, liability Key takeaways of consumer purchases. The consumer purchase process involves pre-purchase steps, identifying the product, the market, and financing. Purchase steps of negotiating the purchase price in terms of sale. Post-purchase steps of ensuring satisfaction. Attribute score, attribute scoring can be used to help identify the product. A product may be sold in different markets that may affect the cost of the purchase. Financing choices can affect the cost of the purchase. Strategies such as maximizing the advantages of branding, timing, and transaction costs can benefit consumers. There are common features of scams and also legal protections and remedies. <laughs> Buying a car. Show how the purchasing process, identifying the product, the market, and the financing may be applied to a car purchase. Explain the advantages and disadvantages of leasing versus borrowing as a form of financing. Analyze all the costs associated with car ownership and define lemon laws. Identifying the product. What kind of driving will you use the car for? Will you depend on it to get you to work or will you use it permanently for weekend getaways? Do you need carrying capacity or hauling capacity? Do you live in a metropolitan area where you will be driving short distances at lower speeds and often idling in traffic? Do you live in a more rural area where you'll be driving longer distances at faster speeds? Do you live in a climate where winter or rainy season would make tra traction and storage an issue? How much time will you spend in the car every day? How many miles will you drive each year? How long do you expect to keep the car? And do you expect to resell or trade in the car? So these are all questions that you should be asking yourself before buying a car. So there are several factors that, that, uh, that play a role in influencing your decision to buy a car. Fuel efficiency, uh, of course. Um, the size and the horsepower, the condition, uh, what new floor model are used, performance quality, entertainment features, navigation features, safety features, appearance and comfort, reliability, and then the make. And these are pretty self-explanatory, so I won't um, read the effects. But essentially, here we come to this um, chart. Uh, you have information which is obtained by the dealers, manufacturers, consumers, and trade journals. <clears throat> on the on um, identifying a used product, you, you, we can look at the ex exterior, interior, the engine, and the history. The exterior, you have alignment, doors, lights, mirrors, paint, panels, bumper stick, uh, bumpers, trims, shocks, windshields, and windows. And dissatisfaction with any of these things would be grounds for you to negotiate the price down. Interior, you have carpets, upholstery, instruments and controls, trunk, seats, safety features, and comfort. Engine, belts and hoses, battery, exhaust, fluids, Id um, idling or driving. And then history, accidents. If, if you can get the car facts, then that's also a good way to negotiate down the price. A car can be sparkling on the outside, but it, if it was in seven accidents, you may have to put in a little more money into that car eventually. Flooding history, frame damage, airbag deployment, the number and type of owners, and the mileage. 
So, of course, <clears throat> a car that's been handed down from owner to owner in a very short amount of time may prompt you that the car has some sort of issues that the, that the smiling dealer is not giving you. Uh, so new, um, we have recession and inflation use. We have up. This chart doesn't make any sense. Okay. So then identifying the financing, financing you can you put um, a deposit in cash or pay the car cash if you have the money to do it. Why not? Loan or lease. Normally, you wouldn't drop all that money for a car. You would um, put, a, put down a deposit, lease it, or get a loan. <laughs> Um, with cash, you have an opportunity cost, and that opportunity cost is the cash loss because if you you know if you put down twenty k for a car, and all of a sudden the value of the car is inferior to the twenty k you put into the car, then you're gonna have buyer's remorse because um you're not going to you're not going to have that whole value you want the value of the car to be superior than what you're paying for it as a consumer for the loans you have interest you got a down payment to uh to consider this is your opportunity cost because you're giving that away to them um and it's it's something that you're not going to get back and you could use that for something else then you have the annual percentage rate and then the terms as well Leasing, you have interest or finance charges. You have a down payment to put down also. That's when they tell you that it's, um, you know, 3000 down and 200 a month. So that's that's um, that's what that means. You have opportunity costs and then also an annual percentage rate. You have terms, mileage restrictions, and then buyout also. <clears throat> the price of the car should be the same regardless of how it's financed. The car should be worth what it's worth no matter how it's paid for. Borrowing. If you typically drive a car into the ground until it costs more to repair than it's worth, then you're better off borrowing and spreading the cost of financing over a longer period. Lease. If you intend to keep your car only for the term of the lease and not to exercise a buyout option, then it's usually more cost effective to lease. However, you have to keep in mind that when you're doing the lease option, if you're not, if you're going to be um, updating to the new newest model every time, there's a couple of things to consider. If you borrow money to purchase a car that you really love, then when you're done paying off your car, that car is yours. You can keep it at home. You can look at it and you can say that car is mine. But when you lease a car, if you add up all the payments that you put into the car and you're like, wow you put in almost a little more than half of the value of the car into the car and then at the end of the leasing term you have to hand back the keys that car is not yours so that's why there's a really big opportunity cost to leasing um, but another good thing about another good thing about leasing is that suppose you know that you're gonna be in Florida for just a very short amount of time um and you you know you you pay out that lease and you hand in the keys and then you move to a state that you know that doesn't require you to have a car because of their public transportation which is which is um a likely scenario in in most of the country that has a really strong public transportation system then you know having a car just parked in wherever you're moving to is 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 not feasible any longer so that's just something to to keep in mind um, if you buy a car, you can, you can always sell the car and then recover some of the value of that car. As you purchase, you can negotiate, um, the features of the car, warranty terms, serving discounts, financing terms, rebates, trade-in value, and so on. So one thing that I was, that I was told is that you can abide by somebody who used to work in the car dealership. I don't know how accurate this is is that whenever you see the price of a car there's always going to be a 20 a 20 percent area of negotiation and you can always negotiate the price of the of the car down to 20 percent because um even if you negotiate it down to 20 percent the dealership is still making whatever they wanted to make off the car they're recovering the cost of the car from the manufacturer and you walk away happy also. 
So, I mean, of course, the dealer wants to try to maximize their income by selling the car way above markup. But if you, um, but that this is what the guy told me that you can always negotiate it down. And it was kind of confirmed years later when one of my professors gave an example of them negotiating down um, a ten thousand dollar car that they ended up getting for eight grand. Um, so even at that eight grand, even though it, it appears to be a big loss for the dealership, they're still making whatever it is that they wanted to make minimally profit wise. The dealer fees and and re also recovering um, the initial money that they paid for the car from the manufacturer. After your purchase, you have maintenance to do and replacement. Lemon laws are laws that protect consumers who unknowingly purchase a car that proves to be defective. Although sometimes the, the legal process can be so long that even though the, we know that there are lemon laws, um, as the chapter indicates, it's, it's not something that will protect us right away. So if you go to CarMax and you buy a car, you're, you're buying the car with the with the anticipation that the car is going to be functioning properly because CarMax, they have mechanics on staff and whatnot. You drive away, the car shuts down. So now what happens? You have to look at the terms of the purchase and see if the damage that the car had was something that is covered. Um, so I know this happened to someone who, who purchased a car from CarMax and it was a Volvo. I, I like Volvo, but this person um, happened to have this problem with Volvo and the the car the the problem that the car had was one that was not covered under the the warranty because you know they cover like big things like engine and, and transmission and stuff like that but it was causing the car to just spontaneously shut off while driving and it was a very dangerous thing but even though um, we know that there are quote unquote laws that can protect consumers who purchase a car that proves to be defective the the um, dealership will always have that contract in hand and be like uh 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 so you have to be very careful I'm very hesitant from myself from buying cars um, by owner because to me the cheaper the car the more the the increase of likelihood there is that the that car has a big problem so if I see a really nice car on Cars.com or on Auto Trader that is really cheap i i am always skeptical about that because if you walk away and that car if something happens to it it doesn't start it shuts off or, or whatever the case may be that you gave the person that money opportunity cost and you have the product so you know you have to just be very careful about that at least with a dealership you know that under certain circumstances, if something happens to the car, you can bring it back or trade it in for another car. But you don't have that opportunity with um, with a private seller. Key takeaways, the purchase process may be applied to a car purchase. Attribute scoring may be helpful to identify the product. Common car financing is either through loan or lease. A warranty guarantees minimal satisfaction with performance attributes. Laws protect consumers who are dissatisfied with their car purchases or unknowingly buy defective cars. And this concludes the video lecture for Chapter 8, Consumer Strategies of the Personal Finance Text. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always feel free to contact me at any time. Thanks and have a great day.